the newton raphson power flow example. In this tutorial, we'll be doing a practical example on power flow, but using the newton raphson method. And this is more of an example-based tutorial rather than going through what the theory says and how the theory works. So this is just an example-based tutorial. Okay, this example really comes from Granger and Stevenson's Power System Analysis book. And this book is used in many different classes and universities, but uh, we're going to be going over example 9.4 within this book. So if you want to follow along, it's section 9.3 and example 9.4. Okay, so uh, like I said, this is going to be an example-based tutorial. And the first equation that's presented is G1 of X1 is equal to H1 comma U G2. Okay, so initially, these are the two equations that are presented in example 9.4 of the book. So zoom out here. And then with these equations, we're also presented with, with uh, G1 is equal to 4 times U to times sine of X1 equal to 0. And G2 to square X2, and that is equal to 0. Okay, so we're provided with these two equations. The first thing to note, notice that this equation and these two equations are the same thing, right? Which means H1 of X1, X2, and U, that is equal to 4U X2 sine of X1, okay? And uh, H2 of X1, X2, U is equal to 4X2 squared minus for you x2 cosine of x1. So h1 and h2 are defined by these two equations, uh, which means that b1, b1 is equal to negative 0 0.60, okay? Because b1 is already negative here, and uh, we have a positive there. So b1 then has to be a negative uh, for that to be positive, okay? And then B2 is also negative 0 0.30, okay? So the next part that we're presented to, and this is the part that, uh, that really uh, confuses a lot of people, is the actual partial differential equation, okay? So now what we're going to say is that uh, the uh, partial derivative of dg1 with respect to dx1. Now dg1, remember dg1 is this right here. So now we have to take this equation and then do a partial derivative with respect to the x1 variable. So now uh, it'll become this. 4 times u, u stays where it is because we're multiplying. x2 stays where it is because x2 has nothing to do with x1. Uh, but guess what? There's a sine term right here. And the derivative of sine of x, if we all remember, uh, is equal to the cosine of x. So the derivative of sine is equal to the cosine. So because we're taking the derivative of g1 with respect to x1, we only take the derivative of this term here, which is equal to cosine of x1. Okay, and then this right here, because it's a constant, if we take the derivative of a constant, that will equal zero. Okay, so here's our first equation. So now we have to take the partial derivative of dg1 with respect to dx2. Okay, so we're taking the same, same uh, equation here, but now we have to take the derivative with respect to dx2. And keep in mind, that dx2 is this term right there, okay? So that's the only term that going to be really uh, affected by the partial derivative. Also keep in mind that the derivative of the x term, right? If it's just the derivative of x, well that is equal to just simply one. So which means that if we take the derivative of this term right here with respect to x2, and then that'll equal four times u times 1, right? The derivative of x2 is just 1, times that by the sine of x1, right? 
So, so remember, the constant term just goes to zero. Okay, so now, uh, clear the screen up a little bit so it's easier for us to work in. So the next thing is that we have to take the partial derivative of dg2 with respect to the x1 term, right? And dg2 is this, this equation here. And remember, we are only concerned about dx1 at this point. So dx1, as you can see, is just this cosine term, right? There's no other x1 term in this, in this equation. Well, the first term goes to zero because there's no x1 term there. This third term, which is a constant, that's also going to go to zero because there's no x1 term there. So the only thing that's left is this term right here. And uh, if you remember, the derivative of cosine of x, that's going to equal negative sine of x. So the derivative of cosine is going to equal negative sine. Our equation is going to be... Uh, negative, okay, uh, 4 times u, u stays where it is because it's part of this group, uh, x2 stays where it is uh, because we're only concerned about this term re right here, and that is going to equal negative sine of x1, okay, and remember this term goes to 0. And these two negatives obviously cancel out, so that becomes just a positive for you, uh, x2 sine of x1. Okay, um, so now I'm going to move this here. Okay, now we're going to take the partial derivative of dg2 with respect to the x2 term, right? Uh, again, we're here, but now we are only concerned about the x2 term. So x2 is right there. There's a, there's one x2 there, and there's one x2 there. So everything else we're not we don't we don't care about uh, any other term. So now that is going to equal uh, well the derivative the derivative of uh, x2. If you take the derivative of that, then we know that the two comes out as a coefficient and uh, we subtract uh, 1 from 2, then it becomes 2x, okay? And we all know that the derivative of x is just equal to 1. So when we take a partial derivative of this term here with respect to x2, that's going to become 8x2. And we subtract uh, now this term right here. Now remember, the derivative of just x2 term by itself is just equal to 1. So that is going to equal 4 times u times 1 times cosine of x1. There you have it. So this is now our fundamental building block of our Jacobian matrix, which we'll get into in a little bit. So now that we've covered kind of the introduction, and like I said, this is more of an example-based introduction of the Newton-Raphson method, and we'll really build on uh, on top of this example, but I don't want to make this video too long, so uh, we'll conclude part one here. And um, as always, if you haven't subscribed yet, please do so by clicking on the link that's on the bottom right corner of the screen. Please subscribe to this channel. Now, if you have any questions, uh, there should be a link at the bottom of this video to the Q&A forum. And the Q&A forum is hosted by the generalpack.com website. So if you have any questions, go ahead and just go to that forum and ask away. Now in part two, we'll just continue where we left off. Thank you. This video was brought to you by generalpack.com, making power systems intuitive.